hey, look, it's a Hyper RX button. It's here, sort of. We'll talk about it just a second, but there is a Hyper RX button now in your uh, AMD software. If you have an RDNA 3 or, R you know, those RX 7000 series GPU, this is not available on the older ones. And if I click on this Manage Profile button, I'm actually in a game right now, so I don't think it's going to show me everything I would if I wasn't in a game. Anyway, you get to this screen, it shows what's available in this game right now. And what do I mean by what's available in this game right now? Well, I mean, not every game actually, I, I think, supports all of the technologies here. And you know what? Let's actually talk about this for a second. What actually does HyperRx do right now? What's it gonna do in the future? And um, I think a lot of people are confused about this. Partially AMD's fault because in their Gamescom announcement of FSR 3, also talking about fluid motion frames, which was a type of frame generation to be added through the driver level in pretty much any DX11 or DX12 game, if you have an RX 7000 series GPU, that was announced as being included in HyperRx. However, that's not gonna be added to HyperRx until quarter one of 2024, but we just got HyperRx today. It only has these features that you see behind me right now if you enable it today. And again, this is only available on 7000 series GPUs. However, let me show you something really cool with 7000 series GPUs. Now let me show you something really cool from today's sponsor, PowerColor, with their Red Devil GPUs with their swappable devil skin backplates. It's so cool not have to be locked into just one design. You can choose the one that fits best for you, easily swappable with magnets. We've got the uh, intrusive devil skin, which is the kind of the simpler, sleeker looking one. And we've got the mesh design called the generative devil skin. These are all really cool. They just attach on with magnets. Excellent choice for a high-end GPU. Check the link in the today's description. Okay, so these are the things in HyperRx right now. The fluid motion frame thing is coming later. So what does it have? We have Anti-Lag, Anti-Lag Plus, which is again, an exclusive to the 7000 series. Anti-Lag has already been there for a while uh, to reduce latency at the driver level. We have AMD's RSR or Radeon Super Resolution. You might be like, I've already had access to that. Yes, you did. Um, a, uh, Radeon Boost, you might be like, I already had access to that. Yes, you did. And you might be like, FSR, I already had access to that. Yes, you did. So the only actually new thing here is Anti-Leg Plus and the fact that some of these technologies can now be turned on at the same time and controlled with that Hyper RX button more conveniently. So this is really bundling features together, and the only real new thing is the Anti-Leg Plus, and again, the ability to enable some of them at the same time. Some of these features are poorly understood by people, like Radeon Boost, a lot of people don't even know what that is. First of all, you need to have a supported game, and it is a dynamic resolution scaler, but most dynamic resolution scalers um, lower the rendering resolution of your game in order to reach a certain performance target. However, this one works differently. This one dynamically adjusts resolution during camera rotation in first and third person games to deliver higher frame rates and more immediate responses. What I've actually noticed in my testing is it's not necessarily camera rotation that triggers it, it's mouse movement that triggers it, unless that's been updated since the last time I tested it a little while ago. The point is, if your camera is panning quickly, your monitor itself probably has some motion blur anyway, just in the pixel response. And when things are moving quickly on screen, you're less li likely to notice motion blur. So this dynamically reduces the resolution the game is rendering at, but it needs to be supported game. And that game list isn't like super huge or anything like that, uh, but that's what it is. And you couldn't always enable this with other features. Um, some of the other features we've got here is RSR. Now RSR is really just FSR1, but applied at the driver level, so it's not as good. So in other words, if the game already has FSR, you should just use that instead. And certain games that are hyper-tuned are now going to recognize whether it has FSR already or whether you, you would just have to work with RSR in that game. Because uh, again, RSR is FSR1 applied at the driver level. The main downside of that is HUD elements, post-processing effects are all upscaled as well. Uh, also, it's FSR1, not FSR2. Um, so it's really just a less good version of FSR1. Uh, like I said, what I'm more excited about here is Anti-Leg Plus. We could take a quick look at that for a second. So AMD is making some uh, claims here with Anti-Leg Plus. 
So this is a chart from AMD, not one that I made and measured myself. So do keep that in mind. And this is a latency chart. So in this case, lower is better. Uh, lower is better. And we're seeing some results here where gray is anti-lag off, white is anti-lag on, and red is anti-lag plus on. And you can see that bar goes down, which is good. That means latency goes down. And that anti-lag plus reduces latency more than anti-lag did. Now, what actually are these things, okay? <laughs> and what is the difference? So anti-lag controls the pace of the CPU work to make sure uh, maybe uh, that it um, doesn't get too far ahead of the GPU. And that reduces the amount of CPU work queued up, and that can reduce the, la the, the latency of your responses. Now, Anti-lag did that at the driver level. I don't think it had to be integrated into the game specifically. Whereas it says with, or with Radeon Anti-lag Plus, applying frame alignment within the game code itself, so not applied at the driver level, but that means it needs specific game support, it allows for a better frame syncing, which leads to even lower latency and great gaming experiences. To me, this sounds a lot more like an actual competitor to NVIDIA's Reflex technology, which d did need to be integrated into the game code itself and um, does do the same type of thing to reduce latency. So that seems to be what it is. And the currently supported games are um, these 12 games. We've got Apex Legends, Overwatch 2, Borderlands 3, Dying Light 2, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Resident Evil 4, Ghostwire Tokyo, Fortnite, Last of Us Part 1, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, and Forspoken, with more coming soon. Which game's coming soon? I don't know. But I'm actually interested in testing this thing out for a second because they've also said that they have added a latency monitor to an overlay that you can able through the, uh, the AMD software. Now, this is not the same thing as, you know, measuring it uh, with like an LDAT tool or whatever, where you measure the response on your screen or something like that. Uh, but NVIDIA has a similar um, PC latency monitoring tool within its uh, driver uh, kind of overlay stuff through GeForce Experience. Anyway, it says that to check this, uh, make sure Radeon Anti-Lag Plus is enabled on the supported game. Now, I happen to have Jedi Survivor installed right now, and it's actually running in the background as we speak. It says use the hotkey Alt-Shift-L to enable the latency monitor. Cool. And then you can compare on-off difference of Anti-Lag Plus by holding down the delete key, which I guess is disabling Anti-Lag Plus temporarily while you're holding it down. Um, I don't have an LDAT tool type deal to do a comparison of its reported latency versus what, versus what I'm measuring myself. So unfortunately, I cannot do that for you here, but I can at least try out the tool. So what I've done is I have hit Alt-Shift-L. Um, and whoa, we go. Okay, yeah, Alt-Shift-L. I've hit it a few times. We're getting a few different numbers here. <laughs> I think the 23 is the milliseconds, okay? Pretty sure that's what that is, uh, right? We're looking up in the top left-hand corner of the screen. And now it says compare on-off difference of anti-lag plus by holding down the delete key. I am now holding down the delete key. You can see that we are now hitting 39 milliseconds. I'm gonna release the delete key and I'm seeing 23, 24 milliseconds um, so that is what, uh, the, so th anyway, this appears to be doing a dramatic reduction to the latency in the game. And I think this is a really big deal for the success of FSR three, because FSR three is, um, uh, you know, similar to Nvidia's, uh, frame generation technology going to add input latency. It's going to do that. And so how NVIDIA mitigates that with frame generation is using uh, their reflex technology. It looks like anti-lag plus, again, is, I'm holding down that delete key, we were around 40 milliseconds of latency, releasing that down to about 23. That is a big reduction in latency, assuming this monitor is, you know, accurate. And I think that that could be a big deal in actually having FSR3 be as usable as DLSS3 is. Because if they weren't able to mitigate that latency, 
we would have a bit of a problem. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and bring that overlay back up, and I'm gonna notice something here, uh, which is it looks like this game has, uh, using HyperRx, it looks like it's kicked on RSR for me, and it's, in, and it's going from 1080p to 4K resolution. But this game has FSR built in, so it's kind of annoying that HyperRx is kicking on RSR. So what's, what's going on with that? Why, why is that happening? Well, again, not every game is hyper-tuned to intelligently recognize things like that and, and, and uh, properly select the best ones. So similarly to how we have an anti-leg plus supported game list here, over on AMD's HyperRx page, we have a list of hyper-tuned games. So it says, for games that are hyper-tuned, when AMD HyperRx is enabled, AMD RSR will automatically be set to one resolution step lower than native, although it looks like mine seemed to go from 1080p to 4K. Um, anyway, or to the FSR quality preset, but wait a second, I wasn't in a hyper-tuned game. So I had the game set to render at 1080p and I just used RSR to, to go to my monitor's 4K output. So that's what happened here. I wasn't in a hyper-tuned game, right? So if you're in a hyper-tuned game, it could go to the FSR quality preset if you're in a supported game. And in addition to AMD uh, uh, Radeon Anti-Lag, Anti-Lag Plus and AMD Radeon Boost. Again, if those are supported, see below for a list of hyper-tuned games. So we've got this list of hyper-tuned games. Now I was a little bit annoyed because I was looking at this list and I was looking at this list, which is the anti-leg plus supported game list. And I was hoping I would have one installed from both, but um, is there anything on both? <laughs> Am I just missing it? But, but both say more titles coming soon. So at least there is that. So that is one thing with the uh, HyperRx is it will, it looks like kick on RSR, which might not be a good thing because you might rather use FSR, uh, you know, if you didn't want to have um, RSR enabled, that kind of thing. Because again, RSR is going to be the worst way to upscale compared to something like FSR 2 uh, or even FSR 1 if it's available in, in the game. So AMD is making some big graphs here, big claims like uh, HyperRx off versus on. And, um, you know, baseline, anti-leg plus, anti-leg plus, and boost, anti-leg plus, boost, and RSR. Again, boost and RSR are of limited use, to be honest. Boost is kind of an interesting idea. Um, but again, it, it just lowers your render resolution dynamically when you move your mouse. So it's kind of cool, and maybe in competitive games where you don't care too much about what, what it looks like, um, that is cool, but again, it needs to be a... Um, uh, a supported game and, and, and things like that. Anyway, hopefully this video was interesting for you and clarified what is currently supported in HyperRx. I'm very interested to see what happens with the fluid motion frames in any DX11 or DX12 game, if we really get that in quarter one, 2024 next year. Um, very curious how well that works. <laughs> um, uh, because without the motion vectors, I have questions about what the image quality will look like. And it sounded like an AMD Game Com Gamescom um, announcement and discussion with the press, it sounded like it would have a similar thing like Radeon Boost, where the generated frames are kind of responsive to your mouse movement uh, dynamically, whether they're, they're generating those frames or not, which is interesting. Um, all right, I think that's what I've got for you today. Um, maybe you can try out your HyperRx button if you've got a 7000 series GPU. This was the 7800 XT in this video. And uh, my kids are getting home from school, so I'm gonna go uh, uh, stop this video and you'll probably see this video tomorrow. So it'll be morning. You're like, they're, they're just getting home from school now? That's weird. Anyway, <laughs> well, you have an excellent day.